Hey friends, welcome back to the Birthing Bessie blog where we talk about real topics pertaining to pregnancy, birth, motherhood, partnerships, and just real life. Here on the blog, we don't shy away from talking about the hardships of motherhood. Instead, we encourage you, validate you, and welcome you with open arms. So today we are talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and if you know me or have followed me for a while, you know that I talk about this all the time. We are talking about community, and even more specifically, we are going to talk about how do you go about cultivating or building community? Um, again, if you followed me for a while, you know that I talk about how important community is, especially in motherhood, but the reality is community is really important for all aspects and areas of life, but how do you even go about building, strengthening, and just having a really strong, solid community? Well, we're going to talk about that today. Well, first and foremost, just like birth, a big aspect of building your community is reflection. Um, when I work with mamas who are expecting during pregnancy, we talk a lot about um, how you want to feel during your birth, how you want to be supported, who you want there with you, how you want them to show up. And when we're talking about building a community, it's very similar. Reflection is a big part of this process. You want to think about, you know, what aspects of my life and where in my life am I looking to foster this community? So maybe you're a new mom and you are looking for other mom friends. So think about things like, are you looking for mom friends that you want to connect with, that you want to spend time with, that you have um, similar hobbies and interests with? Or is it more important for you to have mom friends that have kids the same age as your kids, that your children or child get along well with? Are you looking for friendships that you just want an excuse to get out of the house and people to go do things with? Or are you looking for a deeper friendship um, and a more intimate and special bond with these people. Those are all things you really need to reflect on. Or maybe you're thinking about needing to strengthen some relationships that you already have. Maybe you're not looking to build a new community, but to strengthen the one that you already have. So the reflecting process here is going to look like what's not working in these relationships for you right now and how can you show up better for them and vice versa how do you want them to show up for you what things feel like they're lacking now and how can you have those conversations with those people um, importantly to make things mutually fulfilling for you both that's of course a big part that we're going to talk about throughout um, this building community and ideas is that there needs to be definitely um, a mutual fulfillment from both ends of relationships. So when you're thinking about strengthening those relationships you already have, that's going to be a big part of the reflecting process is what's not working. Maybe what do you miss that things have maybe changed and how do you get back to that place? Or what are new things that you want to work on together to strengthen these relationships? Now, professionally, this could look like strengthening or building a community of peers, of colleagues, of other professionals. Um, so your reflecting process is going to look like this. What are you wanting to get out of these relationships? Are you looking to have a mentor, to maybe have a mentee? Are you looking to just make better connections with people that maybe fill the gaps in different parts of your work? So in all of these kind of different areas and aspects of life, it's really important to go into this process of building your community with a good understanding of what you are looking for and what you want to get out of these relationships. So once you've gone through the reflection part of this process where you know and understand kind of what you're looking for in these relationships and how it's going to better your life and how you can show up for them in the capacity that you have, now it's time to go out and make these connections. So the big reminder here, um, there are two, two big tips here. One is be bold. I know that is easier said than done and different people certainly have different personality types that 
someone might be a little more introverted um, and not feel as comfortable or confident just going out and making these brand new connections. Um, but here is the piece that I want you to remember is that really, truly, most people are open to and willing and wanting to connect with others and make new connections themselves as well. We as people crave community and we crave connection. And that's why community is such a big piece of our lives and why we need different communities in different aspects of life. So go out and be bold, but have peace of mind that most people really want to help you. Most people really want to be helpful. Most people really want to connect. So keep that in mind. Even if you're not feeling super confident in going out and making these connections, the more you talk with people and the more often you um, pursue some of these connections, the easier it's going to be. Another consideration as you are fostering and building strong community ties is to remember that any good relationship is going to have a balance of give and take. That is important to remember across any relationship and any community aspect that you have. Now, there is a reminder here that in life, we are going to have times where our capacity is more able to give. And there's going to be other times where our capacity is low and we might be more on the taking end. It's not always a perfect balance, but overall, in any good relationship, there should be some sort of balance of give and take. And remember, too, that when it comes to giving and taking, um, we might have an easier time doing one rather than the other. As moms, as women, as business owners, we a lot of times feel like we have to do it all and we have to do it all on our own. So it's not always easy for, for us as a society of women, um, but people in general, it's just not always as easy for us as maybe others to feel comfortable in receiving. So remember that the give and the take, while they should definitely overall have some balance in your relationship, just be mindful that this is a practice, whether that is someone that you are working with and building relationships and building this community with. Um, if it feels like they are not receiving and you're trying to give and it just feels like it's being met with a lot of um, tension, just know that this is a practice skill and it's a learned skill as well. And on the other end of things, it might feel uncomfortable for you to feel like you are receiving and accepting the help or the offers that other people are giving. And just remember, it is a healthy balance of give and take. And that means for you as well, you have to be taking as much or to some extent that you are giving. Um, it is very much two-sided, just like any relationship is, give and take is a big piece of it. At the end of the day, as you are building this community and strengthening relationships, remember that the biggest and most important thing that you really need to do is just show up. Just be there for people and be a support. And by you doing that, you're setting an example and you're showing other people how to do that for not only you, but people in their own community too. So remember that while you're building these relationships and as you establish either new relationships or newly nurtured relationships, take some time to go back to that reflecting period. Of course, you need to trust your gut and you need to really take some time to think about how do these relationships make me feel? Do I feel like it is overall even on the give and take? Do I feel like they're showing up for me just as often as I am for them. And, you know, if that's not the case and you find that it isn't feeling mutually supported, and I want to give you the reminder that in adult relationships, a lot of times we can ebb and flow in our support and our closeness and consistently reflecting and consistently reevaluating how you feel in certain relationships is a really important aspect of building and maintaining that strong community. So take the time, reflect, 
Make sure that you are feeling fulfilled when you are with these people and reevaluate your community. That is one amazing thing about having adult relationships is that sometimes we're just in a place where we, again, can give more than we can take. And it's all about finding what is right and most fulfilling for you. So take the time to reflect, make sure that you are not constantly pouring into other people and feeling drained yourself. And it really should be mutually supportive. Okay, friends. So those are my tips and my encouragement for you to go out and cultivate your own community. There is nothing like having a community and people who rally around you and make you feel supported and loved and seen and heard. So I hope that this gives you the encouragement that you need to go out and make the ask and be bold and start building your community. And don't forget to always reflect on what you want out of a relationship in this community aspect of your life and how people make you feel once you have cultivated this community. And if you need any support in any aspect of building your community, building your business, building your motherhood journey, please feel free to reach out. My DMs are always open. You can find me on Instagram at ebbirthing, or you can always email me at ebbirthing at gmail.com. I am here for you every step of the way no matter what you are taking on. All right, mamas and doulas and friends, sending you so much love. Until next time, happy community building.